And Shiva will be the destroyer. 99% of what people have been experiencing with the film has never been recorded. We are one, we are the human race, right? My family is humankind. Mm -hmm. It means that there is not a human being on this planet that is not my family. It's my home is the planet. Mm Hatha -hmm. yoga is not fitness. It's like, it's actually a prayer. You have been conditioned mm -hmm. since the beginning, since you were born, to behave in a certain way. For me, light and darkness are two polarities of life. Mm -hmm. You can have mystical experiences through light, through light and through darkness. I love that. That's the sound of nature. Hello everyone. My name is Natasha Bukavneva and welcome to Secrets of Life. Here we have Shiva today. Shiva, I'm super happy to see you. and um, happy that you are gonna share your wisdom here. So, um, what do you have there? What's that? Oh, a few. We're gonna be playing a little bit with this uh -oh. power tools, you know? <laughs> it's called a, a trishula, and this is a vajra, the power of destruction, change, and transformation, uh -huh. and the power of creation. Oh, wow. And when so we you are have both. Yeah, when we're activating that in the field, we. We're bringing like the sacred powers that were given to, uh -huh. um, you know, to Shiva and other gods and goddesses. Amazing. Yeah. So yeah. who is Shiva? So um, for some people who doesn't know at mm. all. Me or mm. the Shiva? The, the Shiva. God, the the god Shiva, Shiva, the god. The god the Shiva. Shiva. Your goddess, so, your god inside. <laughs> yeah, imagine in, uh, in the Hindu mythology you have three core gods, right? Imagine that there is a triangle, mm -hmm. right? And you have Brahma at the very top and then you have Vishnu over mm -hmm. here and Shiva. And uh, Brahma is the creator, mm -hmm. Vishnu is the sustainer, the one who sustains life, mm -hmm. and Shiva will be the destroyer. The destroyer. The destroyer, exactly. The one who is going to change and transform. And uh, it's like expressing the cycle of life, right? The wow. cycle of life means that first you have a creation, uh -huh. you have uh the 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 yeah the, the birth process mm -hmm. and then you have life itself and mm -hmm. then you have death or transformation right Strong. Wow. so uh all these three aspects are you know are the cycle of life life and death and when we think about death or we think about destruction we go like oh this is scary mm -hmm. you know it's but we are using that all the time you know for instance when we are um yeah, in uh, every process that we have in life, there is always going to be a moment of transformation, you mm -hmm. know, when something finishes and then something else is being born. Yeah, I so like Shiva it. represents this, it's a very fiery force that, uh, yeah, represents the power oh, that's cool. of transformation. Um, yeah, I love it. I love um, that you say destruction is like transformation. Yes. It's not like completely the ending, it's just a new beginning. It's like transforming process because also in Russian language, for example, mm -hmm. smert, it's like if you find like two parts of this word, death, Yes. it has like a smena mernosti. It's like two parts mean um, changing of dimension. Yes. So Beautiful. death is just changing of dimension. Exactly. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's cool. This is exactly what happens, right? When there is a death process or a transformation process, is either the transmutation of something, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but very often it's like the dissolution of your physical body. Mm -hmm. You go back to soul, you go back to source, and then you reincarnate in a different body. So there would not be a reincarnation if, if that, mm -hmm. uh, if the, the destruction or dissolution of the previous body was not was not happening and it sounds a bit scary right when we use the word destruction but basically it's like embracing the, the sacredness of this transformative process yeah that's amazing yeah um how long have you stayed in bali by the way well i've been here now for eight years uh -huh. i came before my first visit to bali was in 2012 
Mm. And um, yeah, before that, I was nomadic, traveling the world for the last, uh, yeah, more than 30 years now. Amazing. Uh, a lot of time in the Himalayas, a lot of time in, in the US, in California as well, visiting secret places around the world. Egypt, wow. Middle East, um, yeah, and Asia a lot, yeah, the Himalayas. Amazing, but uh, when uh, did your spiritual path started? Um, How do you feel? When did you feel the first time this call for something yeah. beyond material stuff? Yeah, so um, yeah, I think I was 13 years old. I was in Spain and uh, I bought a book which is uh, Integral Yoga from mm. Sri Aurobindo. And um, I tried to read the book in Spanish, right? Spanish is my, my mother tongue. And I was like, I didn't understand a word. Mm -hmm. But I could feel there was an energy, a special energy behind it. Like it was very, very abstract and very cryptic. And I was like, I don't know what, he, but I'm feeling something. And so, uh, yeah, a few years later, I started doing, you know, Hatha yoga and practice and then martial arts. And eventually, um, a few years later, I started studying Kabbalah and going full on into spiritual training. And uh, yeah, the spiritual systems, a lot of mantras, you know, I was going to lots of retreats where we were singing and meditating all the time. And then, um, yeah around the year 2000, 2001, 2002, this is when I, when I launched my own, you know, brand, the Vital Coaching, the Vital Tantra brand, and um, yeah, started activating that more. Amazing. What is Vital Coaching about? Well, Vital Coaching is a, is a complete path of life mastery. Mm -hmm. The idea is that, for instance, if you are facing a challenge in your mm -hmm. life, right, and you are over here, how do you transform your life, or what do you need to go from where you are to where you have the potential to mm -hmm. be? And so it's very applied, right? It's very direct, it's very specific. Mm -hmm. What we want is to give you tools that are easy to use, uh, very direct, powerful, high impact. You know, I don't want to keep you in therapy mode for five years mm -hmm. where you're, you keep on talking about your childhood and problems, the traumas, yeah, everything. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So what we want is something that is uh, direct, fast mm -hmm. and highly effective. And so the, the, the vital coaching is much more aimed at personal development, mm -hmm. right? It means that we are tapping into the different layers of your personality. When we go into the Tantra, we bring much more strongly the, the spiritual element to it. Mm -hmm. So spiritual element means that for instance, when we are, you know, if I'm coaching you, it's going to be you and me. Mm -hmm. There isn't going to be a devotional process to it. Mm -hmm. But when we go into Tantra, then it's you and me and spirit. And we are very much aware of that. So we call the tantric spirit, we invoke through mantras, we, different prayers, meditations, and then we go like, now it becomes a co-creation process where uh, profound forces are involved in the process. Right. Yeah, and I can feel it right now. Yes, <laughs> wow, exactly. how are you doing that? <laughs> you see, we are slowing down mm -hmm. and we come to a profound state of presence. Mm. Now suddenly when we slow down, we enter into a kind of hypnotic trance into a, a trance state where suddenly the vibration the frequency is happening and the only thing that we did to make that shift is like we acknowledged that there's something the invisible and so the invisible say oh they're talking to us let's go and play let's go and engage and we're not talking about the spirit of your grandmother or you know some <laughs> spooky energies we're talking about something that is absolute you know very profound and powerful so this is how the, you know, the spirit of Tantra manifests itself. There is an energetic shift. There are certain frequencies like jumping into a river that takes you all the way to the ocean. You know, like, then you just swim and you just go like, oh, this is fun. It's not based on, a, you know, on willpower, on mm -hmm. effort. Mm -hmm. You know, try to get enlightened. You know, that's, <laughs> that's not the way it works. You just open the channels, create an intention and then start aligning and then, like yeah, allow it to happen yeah, yeah is that true that we can get enlightened through sexual practices um yeah yeah so i you know i don't use too much the word enlightenment mm -hmm. i mean there is uh, you know i think that there is something that we that we can call like that when people think about enlightenment they think in terms of absolutes right mm -hmm. it's like 
you are either enlightened or you're not. Mm -hmm. uh, what I believe is that it's much more of a gradual process. Mm -hmm. You can be enlightened at 10%, 20%. Mm -hmm. You know, you can have lots of light in your system. You can have really powerful awakening experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, but some of these experiences are going to be very intense. Mm -hmm. Other ones are going to be softer. Right? So sometimes when you're having sex, when you're making love and you're engaging into tantric sex practices, you are going to have really powerful experiences, mm -hmm. really, really deep that feel like, oh my God, your brain is dissolving, mm -hmm. your third eye is exploding, your heart, the love, you love everything and everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, you are entering into profound states of energetic resonance with your partner and with everything that surrounds you. So um, I don't call it enlightenment. I call it more like states of awakening, profound mm, states of awakening. States of awakening. Yeah. And uh, for me, the, the goal of Tantra, all the Tantric practices, Tantric sex or other Tantric practices, it's all awakening, life mastery. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I take you on this journey, my goal is not just for you to experience some sensual gratification. Mm -hmm. It's not just, oh, I experienced some pleasure, great. <laughs> oh, it felt really great, it felt divine, great. No, it's like there is much more. We are aiming to the top. We're aiming for you to become a life master. Mm -hmm. You want to be master of your life. You want to be master of the different of dimensions energy. of your life, mm -hmm. right? And so, the process of life mastery means that how long does it take you for you to become a life master? Mm -hmm. Well, it's a whole lifetime. <laughs> it's you a know. whole lifetime. It's yeah. uh, within the tantric tradition. Very often we talk about twelve years. You know, twelve years of training. Mm -hmm. So it's really you know we check on the energetics, on the mind patterns, mantras, all of that. You know, it's it's a profound transformative process where you redesign uh, every aspect of your life. Mm -hmm. All right. That's amazing. It's you, exciting, right? It is. It is. Absolutely. Um, you said tradition. Do you have some like traditional line teachers or something that you belong to or you're like, uh, how, how, who do you feel like your teachers maybe? Yeah. Yeah. So I was in different, you know, mystery schools and following different lineages until uh, around 2000 to 2002. In 2002, I, I, in 2000, 1999 actually, I went back to the Himalayas and started connecting with uh, much more Himalayan masters, but not in a physical form. Mm -hmm. You know, I met some sadhus, I met different people who inspired me, but the core energy that is inspiring my work for like 25 years is Mahavatar Babaji. Mm -hmm. So Babaji is like an invisible master that I never met physically, but has been guiding through very subtle energetic guidance. So mm. when you have, it's like a model of energy and that gives you the codes of behavior or the codes of energy or the codes of the mindsets to, to guide you into these practices. So for instance, when I breathe and I, I sing to, uh, to this master, then what happens is my energy gets aligned. There are things that are not important in the field that start getting, you know, gently dissolved. It's not directive, you know, that, that energy doesn't come into my field and say, you did it wrong, you know, it's not, there is no blame. It's just like subtle guidance that eventually starts creating a frequency that aligns you with that. So for me, that was a very important step because uh, suddenly I had a vision of what the ideal pathway looks like and so this is one of the masters but there is you know four or five of them you know there are other sources of inspiration that come into my field and mm -hmm. some of them are you know himalayan some of them are not himalayan some of them are more middle eastern and all of them it's like um yeah masters that uh, i never i never met physically i might have met them in an incarnation without knowing they were they were there. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have, of course, all the past training from different teachers I've been working with. But now the, the, it's, it's self-sourcing. It means that everything that I'm teaching is not read in books. You know, it comes from, I wake up in the middle of the night, like last night, for instance, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a beautiful moment. I don't know if you saw that. There is an alignment with like um, four planets and the moon right in the middle mm -hmm. of it. 
and four very bright planets. There is Saturn, there is Mars, there is Venus and Jupiter. Mm -hmm. And so when you wake up in the morning around five o'clock and the moon was right there in the middle of that. So I go outside, I'm there naked in my garden. <laughs> it's, it's cold, it's, the, you know, it's still night. And this pure vibration, I take my drum, I start activating. Mm -hmm. And so this is how, you know, I create the ritual, I create the invocation, and then uh, I go back, lay down, and I start having insights, mm -hmm. you know, start writing down what's coming. So this is the way, you know, my, my tantric system is being done. Amazing. Yeah. So it's not about the rules. It's not about something that you have to do or you have your practice daily routine at seven o'clock or something. It's no. like how you flow and feel and uh, create your own rituals, right? Yes, exactly. So, you know, everything that happens on this planet has a role for different people, right? So the classical Tantra techniques, for instance, you can start searching and then you find a physical guru who is going to take you a long way. Uh -huh. I was with physical teachers, you know, for, for 12 years mm -hmm. that guided me very precisely. Mm -hmm. And they had, you know, certain techniques, there were certain, um, yeah, rules, you know, they were not rigid, but they were basically guidelines on how to, to get there. So this is a very important thing as well. You know, mm -hmm. the reason why they are there is because they have been guides for humankind for a long time. And some of them reincarnate, they come back into different bodies. Uh, but you have different ways of approaching it. Mm -hmm. One of them is by following a tradition which is already established, you know, and another one is by reinventing your own mm -hmm. flow, tuning into that. And so when, uh, when, you know, if I ask you what is Tantra, you will be like, you will give me a few ideas. ideas. Uh, what I believe, you know, my experience of Tantra is this, you are high in the glaciers, in the high Himalayas. You know, imagine mm -hmm. that you are 6,000 meters high over there. And then you feel a source, mm -hmm. you know, you feel the spirit and the spirit is unlimited. It's wide, it's powerful. There is no limit to it. And so that force is going to channel itself through your being and through the filter of your mind, you're going to have experience it through the filter of your personality, suddenly you are going to have realizations, mm -hmm. you're going to have insights. And so those insights, for instance, if you write them down, you can recreate a whole philosophy, you know, you can recreate a whole new way of living. That is the unique translation mm -hmm. of your experience of that energy, right? Mm -hmm. So imagine that that spirit, that specific spirit, which is, you can call that the spirit of Tantra or the spirit of yoga, which are like two very parallel systems. The spirit of Tantra has been broadcasting or transmitting to humankind for 1500 years actively, right? So in 1500 years, you might have some teachings that have been written down in the form of Tantras, right? Very specific sacred scriptures. But probably I would say 99% of what people have been experiencing with the film has never been recorded. For sure. Right? It's like 1500 years. Most of it has been lost, burned yeah. down, lost in temples that, uh, that disappeared. And so today, who, you know, we are also, we are honoring the ancient teachings, the masters, the classical mm -hmm. Tantra, but we are also opening the pathways for new actualized versions of Tantra to be downloaded mm. and activated in today's world. So it's not one or the I other. I like it. Like... I like it. Like you're honoring tradition, but you also download wisdom through your your experience yes. today. Yes. That is maybe more aligned with um, modern circumstances, modern world exactly. and everything. Integrating, That's cool. integrating things like technology, integrating the living in a big city, you know, like oh, you live yeah. in New York, for instance, and you go like, you try to apply what has been said or the, the guidelines of some ancient guru. Uh, and you go like, uh, that, that doesn't fully click yeah. because you need a new impulse, a new, a new, um, yeah. a new message. So the core yes. element is to understand is this, it is that if you create a box, right? And you say, this is Tantra, mm -hmm. you go like, you've got that box. Then you go like, 
that's not my experience of Tantra. This is one possible pathway. It's one of the possible things. It's a little bit like saying that river is the ocean. No, that river is not the ocean. That river is just one expression of the flow of water. Mm -hmm. And so if, if I come to you and I say, this is Tantra, and I give you this box, and I say, here are the behaviors. These, these are the rules. Here is how you have to behave. Uh -huh. Unless you do that, you're not practicing Tantra. Uh -huh. Unless you do that, you're not a Tantrika. I go like, okay, I respect, I respect that perspective. But uh, I, my experience is that the field of Tantra is really freeing. It's like mm -hmm. unlimited. You know, for instance, if you have a Muslim background and you come to me and I say, I cannot use Hindu mantras because I go, sure, let's mm -hmm. use Muslim mantras. Let's use words of Allah, you know, to activate that. Can you still be practicing Tantra? Yes, it's still, for me, it's like there is no tradition. Yeah, uh, it's wider. Yeah, exactly. Nothing in the human experience that I cannot include mm -hmm. in the field of Tantra. It's not yeah. like, this is Tantra, this is not. No, it's like, you know, we can widen up. We can open the space. And uh, that gives a tremendous freedom and spaciousness and play and flow. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing that is very important when we do that is that what we realize is that no human being controls it. Mm -hmm. It's not controlled on a human level. This is not a human-made tradition. You know, we can create the traditions, but once we design and we say, I created that and this is it, mm -hmm. you go like, I'm robbing you from your own sovereignty or from somebody else's. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that my teaching is the only one. This becomes dogmatic. Yeah. It becomes like, this is the only path. And what, what does this do on a, on a planetary level? Mm -hmm. It creates division, <laughs> separation. Absolutely. It creates wars. It's like, so I don't believe in that. I believe that. No, there is a billion expressions of the divine and all of them are valid. Absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. true. All right. This uh, is exciting, right? To think it, about. It, is, it is really exciting. Yeah. And I really resonate with this idea about uh, accepting other people's views, traditions, their reality, their illusions of reality. You know, it's not like, okay, my truth is like I'm better than you. I know better, you know, yes. like uh, it's OK. You have this. This is your reality. I respect that. I have mine. Yes. Do you want to share? Do you want to um, contact and like invite each other to our realities and see what is there and how we can play with exactly. that? That's, exactly. That sounds really inspiring. It, it really. Um, it is about um, being united. It is about being connected. Exactly. Not disconnected, not exactly. fighting, not like, exactly. you know, feeling core, like we are the one. Exactly. The, one of the core things or the core mindsets that has been with me for, for many years mm -hmm. is like, we are one. We are the human race, right? Yeah. My family is humankind. Mm -hmm. It means that there is not a human being on this planet that is not my family. Not, there is not a single human being, no matter yes. what this human being is doing, it's all a big family. And the other mindset is, so the first one is my family is humankind, second one is my home is the planet. Yes. Every aspect of this planet is my home. It's not divided. It's not like this is my home and this is not. Mm -hmm. You know, this is my ocean. country. This is <laughs> exactly so. Let's the... put the boundaries. Let's uh, exactly. separate. All the, the human made constructs that create separation. I go like, no, I want to dissolve that. This mm -hmm. is like, I am human. And mm -hmm. This is my, my family. This is amazing. This is amazing. And I think your traveling experience also gave you a lot of wide perspective of different of cultures, course. different people and how we are all one in some basic understanding, right? Yes, exactly. So can you share some practical tools how to um, how to go and try a little bit of Tantra for yes. people who don't know about that and who just like want to have a little bit of, 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 of impression? Yes, beautiful. So, you know, most of the times, for instance, if there is, we're going to, to put that within the context of tantric sex, mm -hmm. right? Because this is what 
uh, probably a lot of your audience is interested in mm -hmm. too. So, but we're not going to go there straight away. What, what we want to check is what is the process? What is the process of building up energy and resonance, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So imagine that you and I, we never met, right? Okay. <laughs> we are funny. like, I, I meet you and I go like, wow, you, mm, I like you. You're really attractive. And would you like to come on a date with me or something like that? And then we're on, on this date and then we start engaging into touch and then eventually kissing. Eventually we, we might have sex and connect and so on. And that experience by itself can be really beautiful. But now imagine that if we don't go there, first we go like, listen, I... Uh, And we slow down and then before we engage into any form of touch or any form of sensual or erotic experience, first we go like, we're going to first call the tantric spirit. Mm. We are first going to activate the, the sacred temple. I want every aspect of our connection to have this dimension of divinity and sacredness. Mm. I don't want to rush. I don't have the urge to satisfy my sexual urge. This is mm. not what this is about. This is about honoring you as a goddess as a sacred divine Shakti. You came into my life because you're a gift of the divine. Mm -hmm. And I want to take a moment to appreciate that. Right? So we are already changing. Now we are changing the narrative. It's not like, mm, yeah, you're hot. I want, to, mm -hmm. I want to make love to you. You know, it's very different. It's like first, you know, I honor you. I see the divine. So we're already setting up a very different intention mm -hmm. right there. And then we're going to So this is, um, you know, the Trishula, again, the same symbol as that, right? The power of change and transformation. Yeah, exactly, that I have everywhere right now. I'm testing that. This was just painted a couple of days ago. But so if you are at my temple now, at my place, right? Instead of me jumping on you and, and trying to kiss you or trying to seduce you or with some durian together. <laughs> <laughs> durian is nice. I would yes, love to. exactly. <laughs> so, first we are going to, to create the space, we are going to create a ritualistic space or a sacred space. And the mm -hmm. way we can do that is very, very simple. It means that first we want to call Source, we want to connect to Source. And so... Now I'm activating the, the Trishula. I'm like, now we are dissolving the potential shadows between us, we are creating spaciousness. We are like whew, activating just that. Then suddenly the spirit goes like, hey, we are being called into space. And then we are going to start adding a mantra, a sacred formula to start activating the tantric temple. Mm -hmm. And so a very simple one is Om Namah Shivaya, mm -hmm. you know, which is one of the core deities within the tantric system. Now we are like, now we are like consciously calling in. This is a prayer. This is a meditation. Mm -hmm. We just met and we were straight away activating temple. I'm welcoming mm -hmm. you into the tantric temple. Mm -hmm. And um, by now you are probably freaking out. <laughs> what is this man doing? <laughs> what is this? What, what, is, what is happening? And, you know, it's creating safe, safe space. So, you know, you might have... So that was a meditation. But basically, if we keep on going, then the next step is like, we want to activate heart connection between us. Mm. Before I touch you, I want to know that our hearts are connecting. Mm -hmm. So the code word for, for heart, heart chakra is anahata. Mm -hmm. When you say anahata jaya, you're saying victory to the heart. Mm. We've been singing that before, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. so it goes like this. Oh, 
I feel feel a lot of joy now, you know, because exactly. it's like opening the heart. And I feel a bit um, weird because of the cameras yes, around, of course. but still I can feel the change of the field. And when you say like it's uh, strange, it can look weird, I'm more oriented on how it feels. Mm -hmm. With no thinking, if you forget about exactly. thinking and this like blender in your head yes. with thoughts. Exactly. <laughs> And you just go in a feeling exactly. and feeling is really changing and exactly. it's like, it's amazing. So this is, uh, this by itself is already fundamentally different than what you would do on the first date with somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, the traditional <laughs> first date is like, I invite you for dinner and then we spend the evening talking. Oh yes, oh yes. Right? We, by, the we the day, uh, the, by the end of the evening you go like, there might be chemistry, but maybe not. And uh, what we are doing right now is like, we are actually building spirit, we are mm -hmm. building chemistry. Mm -hmm. And there is another element to this, it is that, for instance, right now when we sing, it can be Anahata Jaya, Anna. it can be very static or it can be... This movement. Uh, yeah, movement okay. and engaging your emotions. It means that, when well, if I sing, just listen to that, if I go like Anahata Jaya, Anna. or if I go you start engaging your emotions. Okay. I invite so, people to yeah. sing you with can, us You can together. join. Yeah, exactly. You can <laughs> practice that with us if you are practice. watching this. And um, so you see, now we did that very fast. We could be uh -huh. like a whole hour into that space. Oh, yeah, the whole hour. It would be easy. Sounds like a, like a great trip, you know, exactly. like going for one hour of singing. Yeah. So you get the picture. Right now with the, the, the mantras, what we are saying, we are calling source. Now we are really creating the tantric temple. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's going to support our connection. Mm -hmm. Without creating this tantric temple, um, the space is just neutral. Mm -hmm. It's like it doesn't have any specific connotation. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. people connect on different levels, right? Like yes. body level and emotional and rational and spiritual. Yes. So um, I feel like many people can connect on the lower levels, like lower, I mean, yes. like material levels. Yes. And not many people go to spiritual level where you can just feel like one. And um, maybe for communication, it's really interesting to explore more higher things, you yeah. know, before yeah. you go to body connection or something like that. Because, I mean, um, Sometimes a man can be really connected on the physical level, mm -hmm. right? And for example, a woman is at the same time on the rational level with like, what is going on? Like, la, 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 like, what's his social status or something like that? Like, what's his job? He's, yes. he's this and that. Yes. What about like, I, I have like, for example, like she can think about her previous relationship and her traumas about yes. that and wounds and she's here in the in uh, here and the man is on the body level like i like her i mm -hmm. want her mm -hmm. and they're like not connecting at all exactly. so maybe like for for connection for the first day it's really important to exactly. go higher to build and up the resonance, build, right? uh, build up the resonance build up like the bubble where they can safely explore all the rest exactly absolutely it's like a it's safe bubble for couple to to communicate yeah, yeah. so what we just did here mm -hmm. you know if you keep on expanding on different practices this is just one of of the possible sequences but you have like hundreds of them hundreds of possible ways of creating the resonance mm -hmm. if we practice you and i for an hour i'm pretty sure that we will go way way further in the building of intimacy mm -hmm. than many many couples on this planet who have been married for years oh, okay wow. in just one hour 
Uh, the reason why I believe that is because I experienced it multiple times, you know. I've been in relationships sometimes where, you know, the resonance or the intimacy is not necessarily kicking in. It's like mm -hmm. even saying I love you is like a big deal. And, um, you know, so, mm -hmm. but, but what, we, what happens when we go into the, the tantric space, it is that suddenly you have, you can call that energetic resonance or limbic resonance, but taken to a whole new level because suddenly the spirit is engaging, you mm -hmm. know. We are being sponsored right now by the tantric spirit. So mm -hmm. it's not just you and I in your past, in your, in your traumas or in the things that you experience. It's like, no, there is a force that is actively creating our connection. Mm -hmm. And so the for instance, force is bigger and stronger and you can trust and you can really like relax in this space of exactly. like someone is watching now. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So if we want to activate that one step further, there is another mantra that is really important, is Shiva Shakti, Shiva Shakti. Mm -hmm. We create the polarity, the, the archetypal polarity mm -hmm. between the ideal man and the ideal woman. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is c coming together. Okay. And if we sing that, it goes, Shiva Shakti Anahata. So we are going to create that resonance in the heart. Mm -hmm. Shiva Shakti Anahata. Shiva Shakti Anahata. Shiva Shakti Jaya. Jaya, Jaya victory Jaya. to Shiva and Shakti. Shiva Shakti Anahata. Shiva Shakti Jaya. Shiva Shakti Anahata. Shiva Shakti Jaya. Shiva Shakti Anahata Shiva Shakti Jaya Shiva Shakti Anahata Shiva Shakti Jaya Yeah, and if we are making eye contact while we sing, you know, we start precisely. And there this is a um, connection. Yeah. When we build intimacy, it can feel a little bit uncomfortable or too much because suddenly, oh, yes. you know, we see into each other's soul. And if we want to activate that one step further, then right now we are doing with the, the heart chakra, mm -hmm. but we can activate crown, third eye, throat, heart, solar plexus, uh, sex center, and this chakra. So oh, wow. we go like Shiva Shakti Muladhara. We start with the base. Shiva Shakti Muladhara. Shiva Shakti. Swadhisthana, Shiva Shakti Manipura, Shiva Shakti Anahata, Shiva Shakti Vishudaya. I modify it a little bit. Shiva Shakti Ajanaya, Shiva Shakti Sahasra, Shiva Shakti Jaya. Okay. Wow. So this is just one of the possible examples. Uh -huh. We can call in a, a hundred different qualities for the resonance mm. of Shiva and Shakti, or male-female. Mm -hmm. For instance, if we want to call in sexual mastery, uh -huh. we want to really connect on a sexual level together, uh -huh. then Kama Jaya, victory. Kama. Kama Jaya, or Kama Yama Senses. means... Yeah, Kama Yama will be for sexual mastery. Mm -hmm. Shiva Shakti, Kama Yama, Shiva Shakti Jaya. Shiva Shakti, Kama Yama, Shiva Shakti Jaya. Shiva Shakti Kamayama Shiva If you don't have a drum Shiva Shakti Kamayama Shiva Shakti Jaya Shiva Shakti Kamayama Shiva Shakti Jaya yeah. How does that feel? It feels different. I totally can say that it feels different and I think that people behind the screen also changed a little bit <laughs> yeah i hope but, you're feeling that yeah, yeah i hope you're feeling that too and how do mantras work for maybe someone who doesn't understand it's like a random sanskrit words and what how how does it work nowadays when we are here and now and we're yeah, yeah. not speaking sanskrit we only yeah, know yeah. several mantras yes yeah. so how does it so imagine work? that every language on this planet Mm -hmm. is a gift from angelic hierarchy, is a gift from the gods, mm. right? Any word, any word. Oh. Some languages are going to be a bit more practical oriented, mm -hmm. right? For instance, if you, if you look for divine names in the English language, you will have Lord, Absolute, the Universe, God, Goddess. You know, it's like it's a handful of, of names or words. Mm -hmm. 
if you look into the Sanskrit tradition, mm. you have thousand names of Shiva, the thousand mm. names of Radha, the thousand names of Kali. You have like mm. a vast diversity. Even in the, in the Muslim tradition, you have the hundred names of Allah, for instance. Mm. So the Arabic is relatively rich. In, uh, in the Hebrew tradition, uh, it's the same. You have lots of names, you know, that inspire different qualities mm. of, uh, of divine qualities. So now imagine that every word, for instance, when we say Surya, Surya, to call in the energy of the sun. Surya means sun in the Sanskrit language, right? So when we say Surya, it's like a code that creates a connection with that specific energy. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit like a phone number. <laughs> a phone number or email address that you can use to call that specific, uh, that specific frequency. Yeah. Shiva, I'm calling. <laughs> exactly. For instance, you know, we are having conversation and I, I say to you, Tasha, I love you. I love you. I love you. It's a very different frequency than I hate you. Mm -hmm. Right? And if I say to you, I love you, mm -hmm. 100 times a day, you know, it's like the heart expands. Mm -hmm. it's, we activate a program, we activate a certain frequency. Absolutely, yeah. It's like if you say no 20 times a day, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. That creates mm -hmm. a certain frequency in your aura. If you mm -hmm. say yes, you wake up in the morning, you're like, yes, 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 right. So this is the simplest possible words. But now imagine that you have sequences and uh, mantras that are more complex and more elaborate that tell whole stories. Mm -hmm. For instance, the, you know, Gayatri mantra that, that mm -hmm. everybody sings in the, in, Here in Bali, yeah. yeah. In the in the yogic fields, in the yogic mm, circles, mm -hmm. right? Why do we sing the Gayatri Mantra? Why why is it that suddenly we have a sequence like that that we are activating? Because it tells a certain story of incarnation. Mm -hmm. It tells a certain story of the relationship with the divine. Mm -hmm. And so every time we sing the Gayatri, we are saying we are connected with a very specific source and beauty, and it's like we are recreating that story. And it's a pathway, it's a highway of energy that has been activated. Mm -hmm. And it's not just mantras. For instance, when we go like, let's do a sun salutation, right? Mm -hmm. Surya Namaskar is like saluting the, light. the, 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 the sun god, right? Mm -hmm. Saluting the light. And so why do we do that? It's because we see the sun as a deity and we are having a prayer. Mm -hmm. So it's not fitness. <laughs> Hatha yoga is not fitness. It's like it's actually a prayer. Everything that we are doing and the postures that we are taking is a sequence of prayer, mm. right? Which is beautiful. So we've got that. We've got words. We've got symbology. We've got sacred geometry. You know, I've got them over here. I'm not going to take them out. But basically, we've got a lot of possible mm -hmm. ways of accessing and communicating with the divine. Mm -hmm. And so if we go one step further with that, Mm -hmm. Right? You have any questions on that? Anything comes up? Sacred geometry, mantras, everything. So we, we use a lot of instruments, right? So um, we don't use just one. No. I mean, you can. You can, mm -hmm. for instance, you can follow a pathway where your only point of access to the divine is going to be one single mantra. Mm -hmm. You receive that mantra and then this is the only thing that you practice for the rest of your life. Wow. Right? There are some masters who got enlightened and who got full on into God realization by just doing one thing. Mm. Buddha. <laughs> exactly. You sit down. Just follow your breath. <laughs> exactly. Listen to your breath and meditate. So that's, that's a powerful practice. So what tends to happen is that sometimes our mind enjoys the diversity, it enjoys, mm -hmm. you know, different points of connection. Mm -hmm. But you have to tune in internally and see what you know, what works for you. This is why there is such a diversity of, of practices. Mm -hmm. You can uh, reach states of union through your artistic expression, mm -hmm. even through scientific research, through creating businesses, through, there's all sorts of pathways that you, that you can follow that are going to access, allow you to access states of profound union and profound bliss. Mm. How to find your own way? Um, how, how people yeah, can feel you feel your truth. 
you know, you test the waters and you see how your body and your system responds to different things. For instance, if, uh, if I take you to the gym and I say, okay, let's do some kickboxing. Now let's do some aerobics. Now let's do some Zumba. Uh, let's do some uh, partner dance. You know, you will try different things and then you will go like, oh, I really, I really vibrate really well with the Latino vibe. <laughs> with Sumba and other like yeah, that feels really good and then you try again kickboxing you're like no no I don't like I don't like the kickboxing or the people will go like oh yeah oh warrior you know they vibrate with that uh -huh. so there is a natural frequency inside of you that is wow. going to be attuned to different things the good news is that it's up to you there is I once you start following your truth you cannot get it wrong mm -hmm. yeah but if you don't follow your truth life will show you like a little bit exactly exactly that you are not on the way exactly. that's cool so i want to take this one step further when uh, you know imagine that we're on this date together mm -hmm. and now we have been singing some mantras activating creating resonance between our chakras and so on the next step would be to start using energy techniques mm -hmm. so energy techniques what does it look like it's like breathing together shaking you know we could be standing and ah, <laughs> and shaking but we're going to take one which is a bit more simple which is just like looking into each other's eyes and then you start opening your mouth a little bit relax your jaw oh. <laughs> And now we start breathing together. Mm -hmm. So now our... Through the mouth, right? Well, it can or... be through the nose as well. Mm -hmm. The moment we synchronize our breathing, it's all going to, to work. Mm -hmm. and so again, we go into this practice. We could be doing that for like five, ten minutes, half an hour. We could be like in meditation for an entire three months. I don't know, you know, into where we are just meditating together, feeling the resonance. Sounds until, good. Yeah. And three months of video making yeah exactly. like <laughs> so what uh, what is going to happen now when we do that is we enter we start entering into uh, a spiritual merging or soul merging experience mm -hmm. you know suddenly people go like oh this is my soulmate you go like because this was already established before but we can mm. actively create mm. that level of resonance oh wow i want you to be my soulmate that's One amazing person. yeah exactly so we start Vibrating that together. You can use mantra, just a bit of breathing. And then what comes next? Very naturally after we breathe, what else can we do? Touch. Touch, okay. <laughs> Before we go into touch, what move. else? Move. Move, exactly. So if we move, for instance, if we are very static, you know, look into each other. There's no movement, it's kind of static. But now let's start moving our body. So rocking a little bit. Okay, you get the picture, right? Now we are entering into movement. So uh -huh. moving more energy, now we are activating this flow. And the movement right now is very slow, but it could be much more, you know, activating to a different, different place. Mm -hmm. Again, the intention is to create connection with you. Mm. I want to feel you. I want to feel your energy. I want to feel your heart, your beauty, your eyes. Before I even engage into touch, I want to really create mm. this foundation. See, you know, really this, see this really romantic container, this sacred romantic container. Mm. That is really the love of Krishna and Radha, the love of Shiva and Shakti coming together. Yeah, I really love the idea that uh, you can create your soulmate. Like exactly. we are one, yes. And sometimes people are like, oh, I'm so in love. It's like my like best uh, soulmate ever. Exactly. Uh, it's like oh, and they overestimate this connection a little bit. Yes. Because it's like oh, there's only one person on this earth who is like my soulmate. Who is the right? We person? are all uh, soulmates, right? And we can really create this connection even with someone uh, like your ex-husband for example and to be like friends exactly like no no fighting anymore about anything you can really exactly. create connection with people around you and even people who you have difficult relationship with exactly. right exactly it doesn't have to be male female it can be 
man to man if they mm -hmm. you know if you are you are gay or you're straight it still works it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be polarized with different genders mm -hmm. uh, it can be also polarized for instance if i have a good brother a good male friend mm -hmm. we can do these practices together engaging erotic fire or not even if there is no sexual attraction my goal is not to have sex with that person my goal is just to engage Activate. in erotic fire so for instance it can become much more you know we can dive into intensity for instance i can dive into a practice where it's going to be ah, 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 activating erotic fire but in a much more grounded and warrior way mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that there is going to be an engaging of sexual energy in the form of touch or in, in, in form of you know traditional sex but we can build up that i've been sometimes in circles where we are building sexual fire with a tribe of 30 men and the whole place goes crazy it's like boom, explosions of kundalini in the middle and it becomes really fiery and fun right so this is men as a tribe enter into orgasmic trance together i remember <laughs> one one time my friend um, came occasionally yes. to sauna, mm -hmm. to um, like Banya here in Bali, and there was a day for men. And mm -hmm. she came there and she didn't see anything, but she heard uh, how they were breathing together. They did some uh, practice, like <sighs> like yes. like men in a circle. They were breathing, and she was like, "I entered the space." And I got goosebumps all around the body. Exactly. And she was like, what is going on there? Because that energy was so strong that she could feel it. Exactly. Even like without entering the space. Exactly. So Beautiful. it's like being in a tribe. And in some cultures, it's like strictly prohibited to have a strong connection with a man because it's like, oh, I'm not a masculine enough if, if I like feel something to a man. And like, exactly. you know, but this brotherhood this this man tribe it's so beautiful exactly but yeah yeah we want to to dissolve a little bit of all these homophobic mindsets and, and be like no there can be very profound levels of intimacy and merging of energies between between men between women uh you know with and the same applies to you know to animals i could be doing this practice with my grandmother you know without engaging erotic fire but it's mm -hmm. like breathing together making connection and, and really feeling that oh, yeah. you know in a, in a profound level you can do that with nature with animals you know you can do that with with profound you know and it's all about connecting with the divine in different different forms it's so beautiful connection yeah. not disconnection exactly so if we go back to our date right uh -huh. now now we are breathing together mm -hmm. then what is the next thing that we can do what do you believe can can happen next? now it's touch definitely no <laughs> not yet there's one more before Okay, I'm well, too fast. Yeah. <laughs> you see, but this is how we how we do it. Usually, you, usually you are going to I rush. Mean, I really. I go mean. like I like you. I want to kiss you. Okay. Boom. Can that's... I can I touch myself? At yes, least? exactly. Okay. Yeah, you can you can touch yourself. That's a good one. As well. <laughs> but before before you even touch yourself, there is one that can can be activated, which is sound. Sound. Yeah, exactly. So sound, breath, yeah, movement, and sound. Exactly. The so three now we are elements of. Yeah. There's even a, a awakening sexual energy and awakening <laughs> in general. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There is even a, a code code for that, which I call PBSMTV. Presence, breath, sound, movement, touch, and then voicing. So wow. presence, breath, sound. And so what does the Woo! sound, what does the sexual sound or the, the orgasmic sound look like? Then we start activating that. Okay. So we are breathing. Now we are breathing together and moving, right? I'm too shy. Yes, <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. They're filming. It's safe. <laughs> safe space. Hi, mom. <laughs> Hi, mom. Yeah. <laughs> okay, beautiful. So let's do it in a, in a way that is really, really soft and tender and, and easy. So we are breathing. And you start opening your mouth a little bit wider. Allow this flow of energy. You can close your eyes if you like. That way you can really... <laughs> and then first, just natural sound, which is non-erotic, is not sexual. Ah. 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 But then we start making it erotic. So what is the sound that becomes erotic? Ah. Ah. I, I feel like my original sound is quite erotic. Yes. <laughs> Without editing. Yes. 
So if you take it, you take it one step further into orgasmic sound. Ah. 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 We're not going to go too far into that, but you get the picture uh, if you yeah. are watching this video right now. <laughs> I encourage you to practice this at home, especially if you have your partner is right there. Just sit in front of your partner and start breathing together yeah. and start activating the orgasmic sound. I like that you can do that even if you are traveling, for example, and you can yes. call your partner or have a video call and exactly. like... Uh, and you exactly. can practice with no touch. You already have a beautiful connection with breath and sound. Exactly. Wow. And I do that all the time with, you know, lovers, with people, you know, girlfriend. Mm -hmm. it's something that we activate all the time when we are in remote Lovers places. and girlfriend is different. Uh, we'll come back to, to that one <laughs> We come back to that. <laughs> we'll come back to that. I remember. Um, yeah, it's a good question. Mm -hmm. So right now we're activating that but you know something that we can we can check as well is in the rhythm in which we are breathing for instance mm -hmm. i'm just going to show you something stay present with me okay if you're watching this this is a very really important moment mm -hmm. because you are going to discover that depending on how you breathe you can also activate much higher and stronger orgasmic mm -hmm. breathing for instance if i go into my masculine dark masculine it's going to be like Mm, right, this is love like it. animal nature. <laughs> How does that make you feel? <laughs> it, Turned on? It's a strong energy. Yeah, yeah exactly. it's like I tune in. I'm like present. Exactly. I'm more present. So yeah. how how will a woman breathe in a, in an intense orgasmic way? A what, woman? Yeah. Um, can you Go show me? <laughs> well, your can pitch you your, your pitch is going to be higher. It's going to be ah, ah, ah. <laughs> and breathing at high rhythm. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> exactly so you get the picture right how does it feel it's beautiful these sounds are beautiful i don't know why and it's on like earth, yeah why on earth did we decide at some point that we have to shame this it's yeah like, right? i know that in some countries uh they have like um law against mm -hmm. the loud sounds at night Orgasmic sound. But, yes. no, 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 loud sounds like uh, technical yeah, or music, yeah. but there's an exception for sexual because ah. they say uh, sounds of nature. Sounds of nature. And they include it in sounds of nature somewhere in Europe. <laughs> I like that. Sounds of nature. I love that. That's the sound of nature. Oh my God, this is beautiful. I didn't know about that. So this is beautiful, right? So the, the, you have high pitch. For instance, if I want to activate my feminine energy, mm -hmm. If I'm in my masculine, I go, ah, ah, ah. Yeah. but if I want to be like, <sighs> experience, how does a woman feel when she's mm -hmm. in her sexual fire? <sighs> right. And then I start experiencing that. You can do the same. You can go low. Mm -hmm. Try to go low. <sighs> and I'm going <sighs> to go high. <sighs> 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 <laughs> okay. oh, wow. so right now there is no physical touch we are just playing with sound and, and breathing and That's it's great funny there's so a lot of fun one more, one more thing into into that it is that if i want to even go one step further into my <laughs> orgasmic sound it's quite i notice that the rhythm is different for instance the moment you start orgasmic it will be like <gasps> Right? It's a different rhythm. Uh -huh. So if you want to enter into orgasmic trance, mm -hmm. without touch, without partner, you are in solo practice, you are at home by yourself. This mm -hmm. is a solo practice. Even right now, my head starts spinning. Right? Wow. You can start activating that and you are by yourself. There is no genital touch. You are not masturbating. You are not engaged. You are just using breath and programming your body to go into orgasmic states just through the breathing and the rhythm right <laughs> okay beautiful and now you add you add self-touch you can use oils you can use all sorts of things you know but basically this is uh -huh. solo practice now we start entering into resonance and then we start engaging into touch mm. okay Finally. Yeah, finally. It doesn't mean that you have to go through a whole sequence, okay? Those are things that can be intertwined, you know. But it's good to remember about them. Because exactly. some people, even like during uh, their sexual experience with their partner, they don't sound. Exactly. They don't 
allow themselves to breathe. So if, you, if you're having sex with a man and the man is like, I'm so, you know, completely contracted. I'm masculine. Exactly. I'm not expressing anything. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's 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 a little bit boring. It's like the sound. Yeah, like, it is boring. Definitely. Exactly. I agree. Exactly. And the same with the movements, right? So you experience the flow, and the goal is to try to. Uh, you know, access pleasure inside mm -hmm. of you. You have been doing mm -hmm. that before, right? Try to what? feel the pleasure. Feel the pleasure. Yeah, feel. Where is the pleasure? Where is the movement? Where? Everywhere. Where are the... Pleasure is everywhere now, exactly. guys. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Beautiful. So when we come to touch, mm -hmm. as if you, you know, you have your hand over here, and I'm going to start engaging into touch. Mm -hmm. The intention is this: it is that touch is a language by mm -hmm. itself. Is not depending on how I touch you, I'm going to transmit a certain message into your field. You can close your eyes. And the core element here is really complete, absolute presence. Drop the brain, ideas, thoughts, whatever story is building up right now. Is he my boyfriend? Are we going to have a relationship? No, all that is out. It's, mm -hmm. th there is no past, there is no future. It's just two people entering into sensual resonance. And so we build up touch, connection. Open your mouth and keep on breathing. And feel the contact on the skin. You see that right now what I'm doing is like I'm going really slow, not forcing. And right now it's just on the hand, on the arm, but it could be full on into full body. And right now, Tasha is just receiving. She's not actively engaging. And then we can shift. You might be engaging as well. So you start moving your fingers, exploring my hands as well. Mm. Then you start giving me signals. It's like, are you enjoying this? Mm. We're building a connection. Again, keep on breathing. And you can keep on moving your body as well. Mm. Yeah. And I'm going to be listening if I get a signal to go further or not. So if it's a yes, if Tasha is not moving her hand away, then I, I might approach the shoulder. Might engage with a different type of touch. Pressing a little bit more. So now we're in a, in a profound state of silence, right? Yeah, it's beautiful. What do you feel now? What do you feel is happening mm. right now? I feel like, um, I feel relaxed. I feel a lot of pleasure in my body. And at the same time, my brain continues telling stories about the interview process, about me not doing something right because, oh, you see, you're so blocked, you forget to breathe. So my, my next question for you is, I really feel this in my body and in my system. Yes. I really feel some 
blockages for like I don't allow myself to move freely. Yes. Even not even now in front of the camera, but even at the restaurant, for example, when I enjoy my first date with someone. Yes. And I'm like, hello. Hello. I put a mask. Yes. I put a body. Uh, how you call this when people fight? They put a metal thing on them. An armor. Armor. I'm, okay. I, I put on my armor. I put on my mask. Uh, the uh, the guy does the same, yes. <laughs> and we come together. Exactly. to talk like that exactly. hi it's very formal right yeah it's super formal and um it's not so easy to allow uh myself to relax move yes breathe exactly. and even sound exactly so why do you think that is overthinking overthinking what overthinking else? cultural habits cultural habit exactly Mm -hmm. So this is a very core. You can call that sexual conditioning. Mm, sexual conditioning. So mm -hmm. you have been conditioned. Mm -hmm. This is the beginning since you were born to mm -hmm. behave in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Think about your education process, mm -hmm. right? At school. Mm -hmm. You have 10, 15, 20 years of education oh, yeah. where this is what you are being taught. Sit down. Don't move. Use your brain. <laughs> they train so this is a training and then the sexual education will sound like and don't sound no don't sound don't make sounds because the teacher if you laugh if you laugh you are being punished right if you laugh if you start giggling with your friends stop laughing what are you laughing about right then you're punished then you then you're the punished right? for enjoying life exactly why because Ooh. You are being, we are being conditioned and educated mm -hmm. to enter into frames that are going to make us useful, <laughs> functional as human beings in society. So it's an organization, it's a frame. This is called matrix. Right? Welcome to matrix, guys. Welcome to the matrix. It's like fitting in the matrix. And then we have certain degrees of freedom. Like, for instance, you can. Uh, you know, the, we can, it doesn't have to be that doom, you know, it's like I had lots of fun in my childhood, uh, you know, we play and we have fun, we have sex, we manage to navigate all that. But basically, it's a very different thing than, um, you know, practicing and encouraging uh, an education that encourages the free flow of emotions, the free flow of sexual desires mm -hmm. it's like if your mother uh, comes to you you know when you're a child and she sees you touch, touching your genitals and you're having lots of pleasure there she goes like, what are you doing yeah, 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 yeah. don't do that this is bad hide, hide your like uh, yeah hide, uh, hide everything and... yeah yeah so you know then after 20 years of experience of experiencing this um, suppression then mm -hmm. of course you are going to it's going to take take uh, take some effort mm -hmm. and some um yeah some reconditioning mm -hmm. to start liberating that so this is why we now travel you know to retreats to reclaim our inner child to reclaim pleasure to reclaim all these things because wow. all these things have been dropped from us so there so is a there is a part inside of you which is the wild woman you know the archetype of the wild woman the completely untamed the, the, the animal, the, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and so this is what you want to access. You want so, to access that that kind of power inside mm -hmm. of you. And it takes around 15, 20 years to learn how to sit down and be quiet. Do we need uh, 20 <laughs> more years to learn how to move, breathe and yeah, yeah. Uh, sound? And so luckily not, not, not that. You know, it's like my, in my experience, it's a three months process. Mm. You start from scratch. If you practice every day, you move energy every day. Within three months, you are going to, to reach levels of energetic, emotional, sexual liberation of maybe 80%. There is always fine tuning, but you are going to recover um, what, you, what you lost relatively fast. It's a little mm -hmm. bit like, for instance, if you haven't been training your body, right? Mm -hmm. And you're not fit. Mm -hmm. You go to the gym within three months, 
well, yeah, you're going to start being really fit, you know. Yeah. You start seeing your six pack, you start feeling shoulders, you're like, oh, yeah, I look good. Uh -huh. Right? So, three months. Three months so, process. Uh, to, to reclaim those qualities, to uh -huh. reactivate your inner child, to reactivate your world woman, uh -huh. to reactivate your goddess energy, to reactivate those things. But of course, you know, then there is all the fine tuning process where going to a place where, because there is always more triggers, there is more places. For absolutely, instance, you might, you might yeah, be absolutely. freeing yourself while here in Bali and then you go back to Russia. And you are there and then boom, all the old patterns come back. Yeah. You say, wow, I thought For example, I... you're sitting in a cafe and you're like, ah, and then you see people like watching at you and yeah, like exactly. blaming and it's like moving, exactly. moving away. Exactly. You know? So don't like, get ah. me wrong. There is something that is really important to take is that when we engage into this practice, practices, we want to be respectful of our environment. We oh, want yes. to be respectful of, of the context we are in. So there is something that I call collective consent. Mm -hmm. You know, collective consent is what are the things that are culturally accepted and what is not accepted. Uh -huh. You know, for instance, if you are in the again in the subway in New York and you you're like moving your energy and you go, like, ah, 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 you know, you enter into this orgasmic trance. Of course, they are going to arrest you. Of course, oh, yes. they are going to be like, wow, you need you need treatment. <laughs> Why? Because and it's not. Like, you need treatment. You need tantra treatment. Exactly. So it's good to have, uh, you know, to have awareness. I live here in the rice fields mm -hmm. in Bali. I'm, I'm aware of the farmers around. You know, I don't oh, want yeah. to. I don't want to be a shocking bomb there. Uh, if you are not, then you become like, um, you know, Bagwan, uh, Osho, <laughs> who arrives in the U.S. with like a bomb and explodes in the middle of that and creates like this massive flow of awakening. But then receive the repercussions or the mm -hmm. reactions of, of the environment so i i like a you know i like a softer approach more mm -hmm. gentle approach yeah. it's like if i'm having a connection with somebody or a conversation with somebody who is not initiated into that i'm like i respect where you are at i don't oh. want to burn the bridges uh -huh. you see, it's like if you have zero experience of tantra and i come with my full tantric intensity <laughs> i go like full-on kali mode shiva mode intense fire predator and I'm going to burn our connection. You're going to be, it's too much, too much. I cannot take it. Yeah, mm. I agree. I agree. That's true. That's yeah. True. But at the same time, it's good to have this um, ability to play with, with your energy. And okay, now I don't use it, but I can if there's a proper place and space because exactly. so many people cannot even relax in a bedroom with beloved one exactly and that's that's a place to practice exactly. actually exactly so um you know we can take a moment just to, to summarize a little bit what, yeah. what we have been doing right we've been singing mantras connecting to source uh then we start uh connecting with our breathing connecting with eye contact connecting with sound connecting with uh, orgasmic sound uh, and then this can be solo practices or they can be partner practices or even group practices mm -hmm. so far we didn't engage in any form of sexual touch mm -hmm. we're not kissing there's no penetration right so what comes after that is, of course, all the escalation of more and more erotic energy, more and more erotic fire that most people here are familiar with. You already know a little bit how to do that. The elements that are going to make this experience a little bit more interesting is slow down, mm -hmm. uh, conscious breathing, and then a lot of practice. <laughs> right? Practice a lot. It's like if you are having uh, making love like six, five, seven hours a day, you are going to make lots of progress in your level of presence, in your ability to activate pleasure in your body. You are going to enter into a trans zone. So in my experience is like, if you are going into a state where you are engaging with lots of sex within a tantric context, within one to two weeks, and for the man, what this means is most of the times non-ejaculation, okay? You don't really see men, you build up the energy. And for the women, it's, it's a double thing. I still don't know the final answer, but uh, maybe uh, if you don't have peak orgasms, but it's different for, for women. 
Uh, mm. It could be with peak orgasm or without peak orgasm, but basically you enter into a resonance state. And resonance state means that instead of having like searching for the orgasm, the peak experience that is going to last for a few seconds and then it's done, you know, you go like, this is a missed opportunity. You don't want to go all the way to the peak orgasm. You want to build it up and slow down, take a break, build it up again. And then what is going to happen is like you keep on building over days, 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 mm -hmm. days. And after one to two weeks, oh. you, start, you start hitting divine resonance. And divine mm -hmm. resonance means like you enter into such profound states of presence, mm -hmm. and light and beauty and love for everything. And like you might have experiences when you're, where you're laying next to your partner and you feel your energy body is just like mm -hmm. entering into this space where you have explosions of energy in your mm -hmm. heart, your third eye is blossoming. You are like, you understand the dynamics of life. You see your life, you, you know, you talk about enlightenment. Yeah, it's states of awakening. And so the reason why I love you know, tantric sex. The reason why this is something I've been practicing for such a long time is because I know it works. I know that something magical can happen when you unleash this volcanic energy, this source of fire that is inside of you. Think about that, you know, the passion that has been uh, procreating the entire human race, right? Mm -hmm. It's like without that fire, we would be extinct. Yes. So this is this is one of the, the most powerful source of creation that we have inside of us, and we are shaming it, we are blocking it, we are like suppressing it, um, depriving ourselves from it. And so if we start activating it, unleashing it, offering that to the divine, making it a sacred experience, making it a, a meditative experience, a sacred prayer to the divine, it's like suddenly, boom, you know, this is this is like bingo. Spiritual, yeah. bingo. spiritual bingo <laughs> you you hit you hit profound states of resonance and what is going to happen is like once we enter into that temple together mm -hmm. if you and i connect on that level and then we start engaging into profound practices uh we are going to merge on a profound level mm -hmm. that uh you know that is going to create a a, a level of connection and a level of, of resonance where we start feeling each other's energies and we mm -hmm. start, you know, it's, it's just so magnificent. <coughs> the thing that strikes me is like to have this potential and not, you know, not activate it. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we would not dive in there is because we've got lots of sexual shadows in the field, lots of fears, lots of things that need to be cleared, past traumas, things like that. And so sometimes it takes a little bit of time. The first time I had a, a really profound tantric experience with a lover after two weeks of making love every day, like seven, eight hours a day, you know, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be like that. But with that woman, I had already been meditating for two years. Mm -hmm. You know, we had been like in profound spiritual practices. We were sensual, but we never had sex. And then when we started mm -hmm. engaging into intercourse, we had been prepared our fields were already in resonance. The level of love with each other was really profound. And so the, these were like the graduation, <laughs> you know. We enter into the last stages and then uh, three years after we met, then suddenly we are, boom, hitting, hitting the very core of, of that resonance. And so when that happened, I was like, wow, oh my God. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Suddenly your, your brain explodes, you go like, Wow, this is how it works. You know, suddenly you, suddenly you get it. Amazing. Let's come back to the question about lovers and girlfriends. Okay. <laughs> what do you think about um, relationship in society and all those uh, things like committed relationships, polyamory? No, I'm fine. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, this is a vast topic. So when you connect with somebody, mm -hmm. you have different containers. Mm -hmm. Different, different ways of relating to somebody. For instance, we can be just friends, mm -hmm. right? Um, or total stranger, right? Mm -hmm. Total stranger, then we are friends, we are connecting, then we can be intimate friends. Mm -hmm. Intimate friends means, means like, we're very sensual with each other. Mm -hmm. You feel very comfortable with me. When you need a, a hug, you come to me. And, mm -hmm. You know, we might, we might even be laying down in, in bed together and, and hugging. 
right? Mm -hmm. So this is uh, intimate friends, intimate mm -hmm. friendship. And then lovers, uh, you know, that's just my definition, okay? That can of be other. Of course, we're just uh, interested in your definition. For sure. um, lovers, for me, it's when you are having intercourse, mm -hmm. right? When you're engaging into sexual uh, connection with somebody, but you don't have a coupling container. Mm -hmm. You're not activating a couple. It mm -hmm. means that this, uh, these are very specific mindsets, for instance. Uh, when you are lovers, it means that you have a certain agreement, certain, mm -hmm. but you are not in a, you can be committed lovers, but you are not activating a coupling experience. Mm -hmm. The coupling experience is different because the coupling experience, the moment you go into that, for instance, if I say you are my girlfriend, mm -hmm. there is a sense of your mind, you know. Yeah, there is a sense of belonging to each other, right? Mm -hmm. So, girlfriend starts being like the coupling container starts being created. In the coupling container means I expect you to be faithful. Mm -hmm. I expect transparency, honesty, prioritizing each other. Mm -hmm. You know, there is about 55 coupling codes. They're called the coupling codes. It's like those are the qualities that we naturally engage when we are coupling. Mm -hmm. And when we are just lovers, mm -hmm. you know, there is not necessarily a projection into the future. Mm -hmm. It's something that where it's much more trapped in, in that. So the foundation mm -hmm. of, of that experience is different. Mm -hmm. right? And then you have all the variations in between, right? Uh, between uh, just lovers and with different stages of, of build up towards the, the coupling experience. And even when you go into the coupling experience, then you have different styles of coupling. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, two very fundamental styles, you know, one of them is symbiotic coupling. Mm -hmm. Symbiotic is when you merge at 100%. Mm -hmm. It's like you live together, business together, you have family, you do everything together. This is full-on symbiotic. Spacious coupling is like... You live in separate houses, you might be living in Changu, I mean Ubud. We're still a couple, we're still completely committed, we still uh, function within that structure, but at the same time, you're a sovereign being, I'm a sovereign being, you do what you want, I do what I want, mm -hmm. but with high uh, respect and consideration towards each other. When mm -hmm. I want to make a choice that is important for me, I will check with you. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, how do you feel if I do that? You might be like, well, that, that's great, yeah, no, fine. Or you might be, well, that makes me a bit uncomfortable. I would love mm -hmm. to be included. Or you go to a party. I would love to, why didn't you invite me? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, so this I is see. the inclusion, inclusion code. Right? Uh, yeah, I think that it's um, important to have a proper agreement. Exactly. Because if you don't discuss that, it can influence the whole system. Exactly. It's like one person can think that, oh, wow, now he is my boyfriend because we had sex, right? And exactly. we like spent a beautiful three months together and everything. But he had no idea about that because he, uh, exactly. he is like from another culture, for example, or yes, like exactly. another co country and doesn't have the same um, structure exactly. in his head and like organically. Exactly. So what you, what you just communication. said here. Exactly. So this is the other element that we didn't talk about yet. It is intentional communication. Mm -hmm. Intentional communication means before we engage into the love making, mm -hmm. uh, we are going to ask each other certain questions, mm -hmm. right? Or checks certain things. There is a, a sequence which is called RBDSM. Mm -hmm. RBDSM. Mm -hmm. uh, RBDSM. We added another one, which is A for aftercare, R for um, uh, relationship status. Mm -hmm. uh, B for the boundaries that you might have. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm happy to spend the night with you, but I don't think we should have sex. Mm -hmm. It's a boundary, right? Mm -hmm. uh, S is for sexual his history, you know, mm -hmm. checking as well on STIs, STDs, you know, mm -hmm. all these things to create safety. Uh, RBDSM, uh, M, R, B, D, uh, the, the desires, D for desires. Mm -hmm. S for sexual history, M for the meaning that you give to that. So this is the one that is really important. Before, you know, if you are looking for a partner because you want to have a child and you want also to be in a steady relationship and the man has a different desire, mm -hmm. that's a moment of transparency where you have to check if you're compatible. Mm -hmm. You know, like, 
you're not going to have sex with that person before you check on that. Mm -hmm. You go like, what, what is the meaning that you give to this encounter? Yeah, and at the same time, I feel like if you ask straight away, you can ruin some magic and you never know how it flows in the future, right? So, yeah, but it's good to it doesn't, yeah, to clear up the current situation. So let me right? let me correct that. If you uh, ask, like, uh, I don't know, I want a committed relationship, and the the guy can be like, oh, it's too fast, you know. Maybe he is not uh, not in flow. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, but here is you know. But he like doesn't you mind. Up, you set up the you set the up the intention. So in my experience, every time I did the sequence with somebody, mm -hmm. it created such a field of connection. Mm. It was powerful. I even did one time this. You know, we checked on that and we had completely different agendas uh -huh. and we ended up still being lovers and connecting but there was a transparency there was something be where we cannot blame each other we can be like wow i didn't know no it's like we're setting it up and i had experiences where i have this sharing with with a new lover a new partner in my life and we have a field of light that is the field of love that is being activated is incredible so I know that it can look a little bit formal like that, a little bit like a job interview. You know, a or, job interview, yeah. But it's not. It's like, it's, it's really profound and you can make it really fun. Like, for instance, when you go over the meaning, the meaning is like, if you ask me, what is, what is the meaning that you give? What is that? the meaning that you give to uh, your relationship? Well, right now, for instance, right. I, you know, right now I just uh, finished uh, another relationship, like mm -hmm. maybe uh, that might be a situation I, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I feel like I'm in, you know, integration mode. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have intention, uh, the desire to, to, to have a new girlfriend right now. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, also, I don't think that it's a good idea to have sex, you know, mm -hmm. to have intercourse. But... I like your presence and I, I love connecting with you. And uh, it's not a door that I'm closing, the idea of diving deeper, but right now it's not. I don't think at that time necessarily available mm -hmm. for that. Right. This was a masterclass how to communicate okay. <laughs> openly. Because so now, now imagine that you're looking for something completely different, right? And mm -hmm. you, share, you share it with me. So what, um, are you, what is the meaning that you give to all this? Um, What's your I mean, intention? I mean, what's your intention this evening? What my intention now is an interview. <laughs> my intention is no. We are just we are just role playing right now. Right? Role playing, okay. Yeah. I would say it's okay. It's, that's not. Should I share the truth or like you can whatever. you can share what feels comfortable to you? Okay, I can imagine that I um, yeah, I'm open for. Um, Intimate friendship for sure because I love uh, uh, Intimacy and touch and it's not necessarily a sexual thing, but I really open to all people like um, Like as friends at least um, I'm not sure I'm ready for a committed relationship at the moment But I'm not close to that either exactly. <laughs> I'm more in the flow and I explore and yeah, I would love to to experience coupling, but it depends on the person. Yeah. It's also in the flow. I'm I'm super open to possibilities of life. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, yeah, I I would love to experience coupling Beautiful. because for me it's more safe mm -hmm. and for me uh at this moment of my life, it's easier to open up when I feel a bubble. Exactly. And connecting also on every single level, physically, emotionally, rationally, uh, spiritually. I love the complete, uh, completely to be tuned in. Beautiful. This is really important for me. Actually. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. So what we just did right now, you see, we clarified things. Mm -hmm. We brought things to the surface that might have stayed in the shadow. Mm -hmm. Might have been like, you're you are afraid of sharing that with me because you're afraid of my reaction or the same the other way around. But what we discovered is that we're actually compatible to share some degree of intimacy mm -hmm. uh, without going all the way to being lovers right now, mm -hmm. or not necessarily because you're looking for 
something, you know, safety of the container, and mm -hmm. I'm not really fully emotionally available either. Mm -hmm. You know, this yeah, is yeah, it feels like so there's, now we go there's... like okay, this is the place where we meet. So the meaning that we are giving to this encounter is, is actually quite similar. I love this idea of open of open communication, and it's also. Uh, looks like a process because today it's like this and maybe tomorrow i can change my mind exactly i'm like i know myself i can change my mind this evening actually yes, <laughs> yes exactly i can be like super um flowy so yeah, yeah. yeah today yeah. i'm available tomorrow i meet someone and i'm like married in one month for example exactly you never know exactly so when That's it comes to, when it comes to the you know to the um uh, intentional communication and mm -hmm. uh, you know setting up the the structure of the the relationship of the connection mm -hmm. right like right now we are designing uh, the the uh, before it was unspoken agreements now it's mm -hmm. like spoken agreements now mm -hmm. we are like no this is the expectation that we have uh, the code word for coupling is yuga yuga in Sanskrit right in Sanskrit yuga it's yuga, yuga. Yuga. So when you say Yuga Yama, it means coupling masters. What we want is to be coupling masters. Mm -hmm. And when we start designing uh, the structure of relationship, mm -hmm. the structure, the boundaries, the agreements, the requests, all that stuff, the, you can call that Yuga Rita. Mm -hmm. So right now we are in the Yuga Rita, Rita mode. What we just did now, before we are just talking, right? This is just personal development stuff. The moment we, we use the word Yuga Rita, we are like, no, now we are invoking the divine sacred structure within the tantric temple we are accepting or agreeing on certain on a certain structure rita mm -hmm. is like the word for law law divine law or something mm -hmm. like that right mm -hmm. so when we enter and when we start activating the yuga rita we become conscious designers of our experience so it's yeah. not it's not anymore like oh this happened and i don't know what to do with this mm, because it just I happened like it. no mm -hmm. now we are the intentional designers of our connection or our coupling experience mm -hmm. right it's no longer something that is just happening that we don't control that we don't yeah, know that's what so. people think about relationship mostly right exactly it's like, it just happened to me exactly I and, it's very, love. and it's very it can be very scary because you, you go like oh i lose myself into a relationship so now we are going no now we are going giving you the control seat. So what we were doing before with mm -hmm. uh, intentional communication, that stays something that is, I would say, that's more like on the personal development mm -hmm. uh, level. But the moment we bring the Yuga Rita and those concepts, then suddenly we enter into something that becomes, there is a tantric element to it, mm -hmm. All right? Yuga Rita. And then when we go into the Yuga Rita, we can go like, Shiva Shakti Yuga Rita Shiva Shakti Shiva Shakti Yuga Rita Shiva Shakti Jaya Shiva Shakti Yuga Rita Shiva Shakti Jaya Shiva Shakti Yuga Rita Shiva Shakti Jaya If we go back to the mantras, we can start activating more of these mantras. For instance, um, Yuga, uh, the speech of communication mm -hmm. will be Vakya. Vak is another name for Sarasvati, and it's the goddess of speech or mm. artistic creation. Shiva Shakti Yuga Vakya Shiva Shakti Jaya Shiva Shakti Yuga Vakya Shiva Shakti Jaya Another quality that we want to bring is the truth truth in the core of our coupling experience. We, I want you to be completely aligned with your divine truth. Shiva Shakti Yuga Satya Shiva Shakti Jaya Shiva Shakti Yuga Satya Shiva Shakti Jaya So <laughs> this is just like, you know, three or four mantras, but we have hundred mantras. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, when we wake up in the morning, we go like, what are the qualities that we are not nailing? For instance, you might be in shadow mode, you might be in fear and so on. Chaya, Jaya, Chaya is shadow, Jaya, victory, Chaya, Yama, shadow, mastery. Shiva, Shakti, Chaya, Yama. We are masters of our shadows. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow, we're masters of our shadows. We have a lot, right? Yeah. yeah. What are the shadows? What, what? Are, what are the shadows? 
Okay, this is really a good question. So in a very simple way, imagine that you have light mm -hmm. and darkness. Mm -hmm. The traditional model in today's world is like, light is fighting a dark against darkness. Mm -hmm. We've got to destroy the darkness. I go like, I completely disagree with this model. For me, light and darkness are two polarities of life. Mm -hmm. You can have mystical experiences through light, through light and through darkness. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, we can meet in the darkness and have an amazing time. If you go into dark sex, Dark sex is like I'm going to be my, you know, mm -hmm. full-on animal instinct, and you meet me there, mm -hmm. uh, and it's going to be amazing. It's going to be dark sex, or we can be in a in a state of intensity where we go to battle together. We have to survive. Then we are full-on our dark uh, power, right? Mm -hmm. So back we have light and darkness as two polarities. Usually, what happens is like people associate darkness with shadow. Mm -hmm. They say darkness is bad. No, darkness doesn't. Light and darkness are making love to each other. Instead of looking at the Star Wars model that says, you know, join, join the dark side, you know. <laughs> and so the forces of the Jedi are fighting against the darkness, right? Mm -hmm. So let's forget about this model because I don't think it's appropriate. Mm -hmm. Light and darkness. And then within the light, you have what we call shadows. Within the darkness, you have shadows. Mm -hmm. And shadows are the things that are unspoken, uncomfortable, the things that we don't want to see, the things that, that mm -hmm. trigger you, the things that are, you know, for instance, if I'm right here and get angry out of nowhere with you, right? Mm -hmm. And I start like being really abusive verbally to mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. then that's a shadow. That's, that's a, shadow. a shadow. And it comes from a place which is immature inside of me or it comes from a place which is mature. Mm -hmm. What's the best way to work with shadows? The best way? So again, we look at sequences. Um, <laughs> there is a thing, uh, another sequence that I call the pit sequence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, presence, you identify, and then you transmute. So presence, for instance, if you notice yourself being uh, triggered by something, mm -hmm. you go like, wow. Being triggered. Mm -hmm. I'm triggered. You noticed. Yeah, you notice. So you, you pause, you are in presence. Mm -hmm. And the second one is you identify the source of the trigger. I'm triggered because you shared something that I experienced as disrespectful. Mm -hmm. Or he's not listening to what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. or, so you identify. Mm -hmm. And then you find ways of transmuting that shadow, changing it, dissolving it destroying it, doing something with it that is going to turn that from an immature place to a mature place. Interesting. So that want... sounds like a big work. Uh, yeah, but I mean, once you start moving in that direction, because it's like something that is progressive, and I agree with you, you know, some people are going to be working on their shadows day after day, right? And it's going to be like really profound. Um, the, the, the core idea is this, it is that you want to be a shadow master, mm -hmm. master of your shadows and masters of the shadows that are projected in you. So for instance, in a relationship, in a coupling experience, you have two types of shadows. Mm -hmm. so the first one is the shadows that come from you. Mm -hmm. It's the things that, that you might be expressing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, inconsistency in your behaviors. You might be lying. You might be doing all sorts of mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. And the other ones are the shadows that are projected in your field. And then you have external shadows, shadows mm. that come from your environment. You know, I have an ex-girlfriend who is like really aggressive towards you, for instance. And that's an external shadow. I'm not doing it. You're not doing it. It comes from, from the environment. Mm. So identifying the nature of the shadow is really important. Then you can tackle it and you can come to me and say, um, your ex is really, uh, is really nasty with me. She sent me a couple of text messages that are really aggressive. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you think we should do about it? Mm -hmm. And I, I might go like, well, let me speak with her. Mm -hmm. Or you might be like, uh, yeah, you can block her. Block mm -hmm. her out. Yeah. Don't need to be friends with her. So we find uh, the best strategies to deal with. Interesting. With shadow. So what kind of um, programs do you have? What kind of seminars do you teach? And what do you, how do you help people to go through their shadows and how do you help them to 
to move all that. Move yeah. all that yeah. and also, uh, yeah, connect with the sexual vi vital in energy. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I coach one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. It means that I have sessions one-on-one, -on -one, either in person or remote, mm -hmm. wherever you are around the world. You know, you sign up for, for some sessions with me mm -hmm. and we start working together. That's the format number one. I've got a big website, 5,000 pages of articles. I've got 3,000 wow. videos on YouTube. Uh, I've been creating content since 2002. And so it's Amazing. like there is an abundance of free. Right now, I don't sell anything on my website. It means that everything is in free access. You can just go play okay. what you want. Vitalcoaching.com. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'm doing uh, immersions here in Bali. Uh, mm -hmm. which are like two two days weekends uh, I'm doing other events you know like a couple mm -hmm. of ceremonies and lots of other stuff and um, and uh, yeah there is more more stuff coming coming up mm -hmm. uh, I want to be able to, to support you in whatever way I can and uh, probably uh, you know at least 50 percent of the people I help is just free flow you know watching mm -hmm. people all the time uh, yeah. Whenever, whenever I can give a hand, if I notice that there is something that requires to go deeper, then I invite you to to sign up for for some coaching, for some sessions uh, with me. And the way the sessions look like, so we have a beautiful river nearby over here, mm -hmm. where we go and plunge under the waterfall. So I take you into the jungle and give you some activations. Most of what we do now in uh, in sessions is like tantric initiations. Tantric initiation, I'm going to give you mantras. We are going to play with the power of the Trishula, help you connect with your own, you know, sensual beauty inside. Uh, we are going to discover precisely um, some simple partner practices, uh, give you tools to better communicate, to, to show up, to empower. My goal is to, uh, to really help you become a life master. And uh, a lot of that has to do with giving new uh, new tools or new powers that mm -hmm. might not be fully granted in, in your system, in your field. Mm -hmm. And also, for instance, you know, for me, when, when I help women, for instance, mm -hmm. it's a lot about showing up with uh, a safe um, aspect of the masculine, right? Mm -hmm. And being like, the masculine loves you. I give you permission <laughs> to, be, to be wild. I give you permission to be yourself. I don't mean in a sexual way, I don't mean, mm -hmm. in, yeah, you know, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. just like give you a space in a container that where you feel supported uh, by the masculine in what you want. Wow, to do. that sounds really beautiful. Yeah, that there is another beautiful. element which is really important. It is that when when I help you in sessions, it is about your agenda. It's about what you want. Mm -hmm. I have lots of ideas about what you could be doing or not doing. <laughs> but, you know, the first thing we do is like, what are your needs? Where are you at? You know? yeah, so it's yeah, very, yeah. it's very For targeted sure. to your unique needs. I know that today we shared lots of information here, but oh, yeah. when, when we come uh, into into sessions, it's just diving, diving into something that becomes very specific, straight to the point. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. That's true. Okay, beautiful. So, thank you so much for sharing this. I loved the conversation and I will definitely watch it again and again. Yeah. And I will definitely visit your website mm -hmm. because I haven't yet. Yes, exactly. So, and you have a lot of articles there and yeah, yeah. things to share. So, so the, best, invite, the best yeah. way to, uh, to find me is like vitalcoaching.com, right? Mm -hmm. And on social media, I have the brand which is Vital Coaching in one word. Very mm -hmm. simple. Or you can find me under Shiva Rajaya. Mm -hmm. right? Very simple. Shiva Rajaya, yeah. Vital Coaching. If you coaching. go on, uh, on Instagram, Shiva Rajaya, at Vital Coaching. Um, Facebook, uh, it's being rebuilt right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, basically. That's and, a common uh, thing. Yeah, and I want many, to give you my, my WhatsApp, my present WhatsApp number. So it's an Indonesian number, plus 62, 822. Three six six four seven six two four. Yeah, feel free to reach out. Any wow, questions? Anything? Remember. I'm happy to have a quick uh, video chat with you wherever you are. Yeah. Amazing. You are super open to people, right? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. I want to Thank help. Thank you so much. The reason yeah. why I do this is because I care. Yeah. I care. Wow. Thank you so like much. That. This was exciting. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. What do we do when we finish? We say subscribe, please, and oh. put a <laughs> like on this video. Sweet. Yeah, Jaya. Jaya, guys. Jaya. <laughs> <laughs>